everybody, it's Sam at Mixercraft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this screen card. I have made a screen card before, but this one's slightly different in the sense that all the pieces are separate and they're attached by just a small piece of card as opposed to one big piece and you just kind of score down through the middle. So I've made a little kind of envelope box for this. So I would say this is quite a special card, maybe something for, it's almost like a bit of a mini album actually, so you can definitely add photos to this because you've got both sides, but it's also a great one for those big birthdays I think, because you can add big numbers on it and all sorts. So this is how it looks, this is the back here, so that's where you, I would say you would write your little message, because once it's open you'll kind of understand. I've got a pretty piece of lace here to tie it all together with my bow. And then it basically opens up like this. It's a bit of a, I guess, a flip book. But then the idea is, is that the whole thing stands up like this. So it's, it's a screen. So you can have it like that. You can have it with the, get rid of that. Get Not get rid of it. Put the ribbon at the back there. But you can have the screen. It's probably better like that, actually. And that's what you would see. So I've used the beautiful paper boutique papers for this one. And I'll show you those in a moment. But you've, like I said, you know, you don't have, obviously, I know quite a few of you do have this paper pack, but if you didn't, can you imagine all of these as different photos? You could have maybe double photos. You could have ones at the bottom here as well. And then you have these three sections because this is your front cover. So you could have lovely, you know, you could even write a nice little letter on the back. There's so many ways to use this. And you can add more onto it as well. I've just done the four panels, but you can certainly add a lot more to it. So yeah, it's kind of in between a mini album and a card. I just sometimes I just sit down and just play around with things so I this wasn't really an, an intended make as such it's just something that's kind of evolved so it all ties up nicely there with your ribbon it's a nice kind of chunky piece as well which I like and then it fits into this little kind of gift box that I've made I'm going to probably change the way that I put the box together a little bit I think I'm going to do some ribbon coming right the way up through the middle rather than that piece there but I do still really like it so let me show you how to make it. So this is the papers, it's the paper boutique and it's the magical forest and it's pretty much finished with now. I have very very little left, all of that is just the kind of carcass from all the toppers and then that's just all scraps. I only have uh, about four pieces of paper left, one, two, three, four and that's my front and back. So I have literally used <laughs> 32 of the sheets so I think I've done well with that one and I still have these little sentiments here which I'll probably cut down and just pop in my little box and then this is everything here I'm going to do the box at the very end and give the measurements to them separate so this is just for the screen card itself the paper I'm using today is the Centura Pearl and this is the lavender colour and this is what I picked up from the works I think it was they seem to have the best price I think it was 2 49 but again I'll link below any other ones that I might find as well Okay, so this is a bigger card. My screen pieces are four by eight and a quarter. Now you can certainly do this smaller. You could do it so that they are three by six because the reason mine's so big is I centered it around these topper sizes. So the width of them, I needed something that was wide. And then just in terms of proportion, I just kind of doubled it, which is why I've got four by eight and a quarter. And the eight and a quarter is your default width of A4 paper. Well, here for us in the UK, that's our width. I think a lot of others will have eight and a half, so you just need to cut it down. But yeah, so this is four by eight and a quarter and you want four pieces. That's that lovely lavender colour. Then these are all the mats and layers. So for the back, I am sticking it directly on because on the back of this card, it's white. So it's only coated on the front. So I don't need to have a white frame, whereas on the front panels, I have a mat and a layer because I wanted that white frame. So for the back pieces, as if you've got card like me and you want to do it that way, these are three and three quarters by eight and you want four pieces. So they're my back panels. Then for the front panels, you will want four pieces that are the same size as those ones, so three and three quarters by eight in white cardstock, and then the pattern is dropped down again, so this will be three and a half by seven and three quarters, and again you'll want four pieces. Okay, so what will happen is those four will go on to the back, these are all going to stick on the top of each one of these. So it's hard to pick up in the camera, but that beautiful lavender colour color pulls out the lavender in the flowers really nicely, so it does tie together well. So what you want to do is before you stick all of those mats and layers down, we'll pop them to one side, you will need your hinges 
to put the whole thing together. So here I've got four pieces that are one and a half by four and along the one and a half inch side you want to score, so I've already done mine so flip it the right way and turn it around. So along the one and a half inch side you want to score at half an inch, five eighths of an inch, three quarters of an inch, seven eighths of an inch and one inch. So you'll have half an inch and half an inch on each side and then that middle half an inch will have a score line on every track. Okay, so if I just bring that up and you can see there what I've done. And that just gives you that nice effect so that it curves rather than just kind of folds with a bit of a, you know, an angle, a point to it. I just think it's much nicer to have that kind of arch. So when you've done those four, and those I've already done, you just basically just want to burnish all of them. And once you do that, it will just naturally curve. So I'm just going to do that one quickly. Okay, so I've got my four largest pieces and these four ones, and you want them so that they are this way up. Okay, so it's a bit like a, a boat. You want them rocking, all right? And you're gonna stick, every one you're gonna stick onto the tops of these, and then this will go over that. So it conceals it inside, just keeping everything nice and neat. Now it's entirely up to you where you have it, I guess. You can have them slightly higher or lower, but I'm doing mine bang in the middle. So again, I'm using my grid here, and I know it's eight and a quarter, okay, this whole piece. So I wanna come down four and one eighth of an inch. So one, two, three, four, and then just over a bit. That's the center. So I wanna sit this over there and make sure that it's obviously lines up. Now, it's four inches long, so it sits perfectly within these ones, but if I just bring it down a little bit, then I know that it's bang on. But do I need to be that fussy? Probably not, I'm just gonna use the four inches here, so these four squares, and just make sure that that sits within them, which it does. And that's gonna be my guide. And then you're gonna put glue. Do I wanna use glue or do I wanna, yeah, I'm gonna use my tacky glue and I'm just gonna add it onto that half. Okay, and then again, use that as a guide. And you're just gonna stick the whole half inch piece on so that all of those little score lines in the middle are all exposed. So we're gonna stick this half inch piece on this one. So you can see I've just stuck it right up to that first score line. And then we'll add glue onto this half and you will stick it onto this one. So again, if you line this one up, so just keep them nice and straight and then as long as you just make sure they stay the same there, you can just pull this one over once you've got your glue on it and stick it down. You basically will then wanna stick it to so that this side here is in line with that last score line. So again, I'm just gonna add some of the glue. Okay, and then just stick that one down. So now when I turn it over, you'll have that nice hinge exposed. So now I'm gonna move it along. Again, keep this all nice and lined up, bring along the next one, the next hinge, and do exactly the same thing again. So. Okay, so that's the last one. I don't know why I said you need four, you need three. I think the reason was is I'd already prepped three, so I kept one to show you how to do it. So yeah, you do only need three of those. Okay, so now it will all fold up like so. So next we're gonna decorate all of the inside. We'll do the outside afterwards. So I have these ones. I'd already stuck the layer, the pattern layer on top, but they're now gonna go over and it just kind of conceals all of that because. Okay, so now I'm just going to add some glue and stick these all down. Okay, then I have my lovely, gorgeous little animals here. Just think these are absolutely adorable. Um, I'm maybe gonna have that one there actually and then that one there. I'm going to put foam adhesive on these because you do have the you know the option to have quite a bit of bulk inside because of this half inch side here so yeah you can do that. Now I've already gone ahead and that's my front decoration and then I have what I think I'm going to do differently with this one if I bring in this one here I had both of my sentiments in the middle but I think I might do sentiment plain sentiment plain so I'm just gonna flip these two, I think. So I have, if 
fussy cut this here and I've got this one here but I didn't cut the edge off because I needed to check the size so I can check that off in a moment but I think I'm going to do yeah same with that one I need to trim it slightly but have that there on foam adhesive that will be on foam adhesive this one will be off foam and then I'm going to stamp some nice sentiments to go there and there and then I've got these bows and bits and pieces as well so I'm going to get this cut down and this all stuck down Okay, so I've decided I'm actually going to leave these blank because I'm going to give this to someone. This is going to go in my my little kind of competition, my giveaway pile. And then that person can add, you know, whatever it is they want to do with them because they may want to keep this as a little, like I said, kind of album. You can put photos there or something. So next you want to decorate the back and you also want to add your ribbon. Okay, so one of them is going to go on the last panel. This is when it, with it flipped over because it's actually the first panel. So if I go back this way... That's your first panel, second, third, fourth. When you flip it over, it becomes your last panel. Okay, so this one is going to go here. You're going to stick it in the middle of this outer piece. And then this next one is going to go on the second one, but on the left-hand side. Sorry, it's caught my glue gun, so it's just got glue strings on it. There we go, like this. And then I'm going to stick my pattern paper over the top like this. Obviously that one will be there, that one like so, and that one like that. And then I've got this really pretty owl which I'm going to still finish off on the bottom of that one there. But again I'm going to leave the front blank because it can be used, like I said, again as a mini album or something. So I'm going to stick these two down first. And that one. Then I'm just going to add some glue just there and lay that over the top. You want to add another mat onto this and add foam adhesive and stuff you can do but then I'm going to just again add my glue. Stick that over that. And again, the final one, stick that one down there. So, and then this one, I'm going to put some foam on the back just because everything else is flat. And just look at my photos that I, you know, will pop in my blog for just a bit of inspiration again on how to decorate it. I'm going to show you how to make the box next. Of course you don't have to if you are making this for yourself and going down more of that mini album route then you know you don't necessarily need to have a box but now when you bring that round and fold those in, bring that one over, it will join up with these two sides here and I just think it looks so pretty. I've probably got too much ribbon, let's see kind of bow that gives me. Yeah, I'll take a little bit off. Like so. Isn't that lovely? And then that's where on the back of this one, again, I bring this all around. The back is where I put that message if you do want to do it as like a, a gift album or you know just a nice birthday card then that's where I would say write your your message but yeah now let's pop this all to one side and make the little gift box envelope for it all okay so to make the box you want two pieces of cardstock that are five and five eighths of an inch by nine and a half okay and along the uh, shorter sides, so the five and five eighths, you want to score at three quarters of an inch and five and three eighths of an inch. Okay, so you should just have this little quarter of an inch piece here. Then rotate it so the three quarters of an inch piece is at the top and you want to again score at three quarters of an inch all the way down. Do that on both pieces and then we'll have these two here once we cut them. And then just to decorate, I've got a piece of that same lavender cardstock which is 
well mine's actually between four and one eighth of an inch and four and a quarter either so if I, I would say four and a quarter will be fine I cut mine on my trimmer so I didn't actually really measure it I just used my pencil and it's by eight and a quarter and then the pattern paper on top I would then do four by eight okay then I have my last one left this is the last topper of that lovely paper pack and it's my favorite little fox so I've just he's they're pretty die cut you just pop them out and then I've just used one of my stitch circles there just to make my little fastening I am going to do it actually the same way that I've done the other box I tried putting the ribbon around and I didn't really like it and then just to connect that little topper, you want a piece that's one and a half by three. Along the three inch side, you want to score at every single marker. So one eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, three eighths, half an inch, five eighths, three quarters, seven eighths and an inch. And do that all the way along so that you have that. So you're doing the same as what you did for the little screen card. It's kind of like a folio as well, so I'm not sure what I'm going to call this yet. But now if I just kind of roll it, it kind of burnishes fold and burnish sorry it kind of just folds them for you just do the very end ones there but the whole thing will just kind of roll without actually folding you just get a much nicer little finish like so okay and I just want to do a little bit of cutting so uh, you will have your score line here, your three quarters score line and your quarter inch score line and then your three quarter score line at the bottom. Along the bottom here you just want to cut up that first one where the square is and then just take a wedge off. In fact probably fold and burnish before you do that just because it's a bit easier. You can do it after, it's not the end of the world but I do tend to do it before and then this little tiny little um, rectangle you'll have there just remove that completely and then just cut little wedges off of the ends there just so you don't see any of that okay so you want to do that on both pieces and then we're just going to stick them both together so this one will stick with that one so this is that quarter of an inch piece so I'm just going to grab oh, some of my red tape here I'm just going to run that all the way along there and again on that one there take the backing off of this one first and you just want to lay that over the top I'd focus on the bottom score line here because you can always trim the top and then I'm going to just bring that all the way up like so and then flip it over like that you have this piece, take the backing off and then fold that one over and it should all line up like so. Okay, and then you can decide which you want to be your front or your back. And then the bottom here, you're, you're folding one of the long ones, two side ones and then the other one. So if this is my front, I'll fold down the front one last just so you get that nice kind of finish there. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of my wet glue here for the base and just pop a little bit on the edges there and that one there and then stick that last one down and then if you just go in the top with a ruler or I've got a paintbrush here at hand just so you can really make sure that that is all stuck Okay, and then we just need to decorate it so I'm going to stick that one on the front and then this one we can stick down last because that's just going to stick onto the back piece. Okay and then with this one I'm going to pop some glue about half an inch covering the bottom there because you've got the little score lines it's easy for you to see and then you just want to stick it behind this so whatever you've got make sure it's obviously facing up right. I'm just going to stick that down there. And then I've just got some Velcro dots. These are the 16mm. No, these are less actually. Tell a complete lie. These are 10mm. So I've got 10, 16 and 20. And then I'm going to kind of roughly wrap that around. You want to make sure it does stick to the back there. But I'm going to just sit that about there. That looks about right. Just stick that right down. 
Yep, that's all stuck. And then don't lift it off yet. Stick this back piece down. So again, I'm going to cover about half an inch and then just stick that over, keeping it all nice and straight and just holding it there for a second. Now, if you want to cover the back as well, you can do. I don't really feel there's a need to do it. I just want to add, I'm going to add that little bow at the top there. Any little bead onto the back. A few people have been asking how I'm getting on with the glue gun. I love it. This doesn't drip or anything. And just to the left, I have a little holster for it as well, which comes with it. And it's the Sizzix one. So yeah, I'm definitely glad I chose that one. I'm just going to sit that there. And it's got that precision nozzle as well. I really like it. I'll take a picture and put it in the um, the blog so you can see it. And there you have it. So now you can take that off. Just make sure that that is all nice and stuck down, which it is. Yeah, I do prefer this. I don't know. I thought at first I thought, oh, I'll have the ribbon wrapping right round with a big bow, but maybe my ribbon, this didn't look, maybe it looked a bit lost. I guess if you've got a nice big thick, say like one inch ribbon all the way around, that could look good. But there you have it. So now that will fit perfectly inside, even with the lace on there as well. Just tuck that in a little bit and then just seal it up. I think that's a really cute, either keepsake for yourself, like I said, it can work great as a mini album, a little folio thing. You could, you could add little note papers into it if you wanted to, but I think it does make a really special card as well. And then again, this one here, which is using the mirrored card. So again, I always like to do maybe two different styles because I know there's a lot of people out there that don't really like to use the mirrored card. So that just shows you how you can make it with that more like pearlized. And then again, bring this one out just so you've got that inspiration of how to decorate it or how I've chose to decorate this one anyway. But this is a birthday card and I think it's going to look lovely displayed on the mantle like so. I think it's lovely. So yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this folio, album, birthday card. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, but um, nonetheless, I think it is a really sweet little project. I've loved using these papers. That's pretty much it now. Like I said, I just have a few sheets left, but all my toppers are gone and used up. This one, you, some of you may notice as well, is slightly bigger. That's because it didn't need to be that big. So I just reduced it down. This is the right size that you want to use, but I still like this one. So yeah, there you have it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it today. Please give me a thumbs up if you have and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.